Good evening, everyone. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us today on this Wednesday, uh, June the 17th, uh, as we have a special edition of our professional development series presented by the National Black MBA Metro New York chapter. Uh, we are on the heels of uh, one of the biggest career fairs that you're going to see. Uh, our virtual career fair is going to be tomorrow. And we want to get you prepared for opportunities with our special guest uh, in our studio, uh, Cheryl Baxter from XSP Global. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, um, our president and our employment chair, uh, and we're going to give out a lot of information that's going to be very important to you. So at this time, I want to introduce our president of the Metro New York uh, chapter of the National Black MBA, uh, Andrew Hamilton, for his remarks. Hi, good evening. Uh, welcome to the digital series in Metro New York chapter, uh, focusing on professional development. I'm super excited because we are bringing to you one of our corporate partners, has been near and dear to our mission of providing opportunities and guidance for our membership going forward in the professional development world. SP Global has been instrumental in many of our career fairs, professional development in the last five years, uh, even down to the CEO uh, having remarks in, a, in, in numerous um, uh, uh, networking engagement opportunities that this chapter is able to uh, participate in. So one of our um, uh, partners in, within the company has decided to come in and share her story uh, about the culture, herself, her journey, and everything else that makes um, that company very special. Her name is Cheryl Baxter. Uh, I, I um, consider one of the highest professionals I've ever known. And I, I, I am looking forward to this conversation. Our chairman of membership services, Gavern Anderson, will be leading the conversation. And I hope that you will gain some insights, some tips to, about this company uh, why uh, this company is instrumental in making New York Black Metro New York chapter very successful. Uh, without further ado, I would like to begin the program now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. We really appreciate that. And, you know, thank you again for everyone that's joining us today. And, um, you know, today we're going to be talking to Cheryl Baxter, who's from SP Global. Um, she's the head of global compliance there at um, SP Global. And we're just going to talk more about um, the company, of course, her journey, and how the company, as we gear up for our virtual career fair, and you know what kind of company it is and how it looks to work at s and Global. So without further ado, I want to bring in Cheryl Baxter. And Cheryl, hi, how are you today? Hello, thank you for having me this evening. Sure. Thank you so much for joining us. And, you know, you know, before we start getting into the company and the organization S&P Global, let's start about, you know, talk about you and, you know, let us know about your journey and, you know, how you got to be in, you know, global compliance. Sure. So I am actually the head of global compliance for S&P Dow Jones Indices, which is a subsidiary of S&P Global. Um, I've been with the company for almost four years now. Um, prior to s &P, I was with TIAA CREF um, prior to that with Deloitte Consulting. Um, and I've, I've had a, a pretty interest, interesting journey. Uh, you know, I'm a lawyer by, by training. However, um, prior to law school, I, I was in the actuarial field. So I come from a very technical background and have progressed over the years. Um, just, you know, what brought in out my, my, my skill set to have a more, um, to start engaging in more well-rounded roles. So, so this role is very interesting, you know, being in the compliance space, it has allowed me to touch um, pretty, pretty much every business area and, and function. Um, and I, and I do believe kind of that, that technical background has, has helped with that progression. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, I didn't know that you're, you know, a lawyer by background, but that's great, you know, being in compliance and, you know, overseeing um, that large scape of uh, the company itself. Um, so, as you know, our, you know, we're going through this global crisis, you know, COVID-19, and, uh, you know, it has impacted a lot of organizations, a lot of companies, you know, have to shift how they, you know, how they do things, you know, naturally. So how is COVID, and how has the crisis impacted um, S and P Global, and how is um, how how have the senior management dealt with that in terms of supporting the employees? Yeah, so so S and P Global is actually not a consumer 
facing business. You know, we don't have storefronts. We 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 haven't had to deal with um, a lot of the issues many companies have have, have been faced with. How, however, um, we were not immune to to this crisis, right? We, um, I would I would say S and P Global was one of the the first players to act quickly. Um, we were dealing with the risks that we didn't really understand, um, but acting quickly and you know making decisions day by day based on the information available was was key. So S and P Global was one of the first companies to shut shut down. Um, you know. With with uh, a virus spreading so rapidly, you know, our employees were 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 um, being exposed, you know, via their commute, sitting in office, uh, and S and P actually were acted really really swiftly. Um, also, I, I I think this is a time when a lot of companies had to to really prove that they had good business continuity programs in yep. place and, and S&P definitely rose to, to the challenge. Um, you know, we've, we've experienced very minimum disruption, you know, with people working from home. Um, and from a nation standpoint, our leadership has been great in keeping us informed, even when the answers are unknown, right? It's really key to keep those open lines of communication to to make sure um, people remain engaged, but also this is a this is a unprecedented time. You know, this is something we've never been through before. So, so anxiety is up. You know, people are unsure about how this pandemic was going to impact them personally as well as their their jobs. So, our leadership has done an excellent job just keeping employees engaged. I mean, even personal outreach. You know, when employees may have experienced some hardship due to um, certain types of services not being available in their particular in their particular region. So it was uh, um, I, I, I personally think that the response has, has been excellent. Engagement continues. We have regular updates from from the company. We have a steering committee, you know, just focused on not only continuing to make sure we have a good plan in place as an organization, but making sure we have a way to keep our employees in, engaged. Absolutely. Uh, um, my organization, you know, um, we, you know, we put out like wellness check, um, mm-hmm. yeah, wellness mm-hmm. group, um, you know, try to do yoga online and all different, mm-hmm. um, you, you know, um, resources that we try to provide for our, um, for our employees because of, you know, what this crisis kind of, um, you know, presented to us. Um, so that's great to hear what S&P, you know, is doing. And, yeah. you know, and I, sure, go ahead. And I, and I would add, add to that, you know, we, we, we have a um, very expansive benefits program, but even the benefits program was enhanced, you know, to, to um, you know, as a response to this, like you said, wellness, programs, um, even even making our time off policy even more flexible than it was, which was pretty flexible because, you know, although we're home, you know, you still need a break, you know, again, this is a very high anxiety time. Uh, so, so, you know, from time, time off to, to even support to, to, um, for fitness type activities, you know, to, to do in your, in your home because you can't go to the gym. Um, you know, that type of stuff has been made available as well. Okay, great, great, yeah. So um, for us, um, you know, just piggybacking of my organization, I've spoken to a lot of people about their companies as well. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of changes coming in terms of how, you know, when companies start going back. Currently, I believe we're in phase two of organization, you know, of the country as well as some cities reopening. Um, and for us, I know for our organization, they're, they're, they're discussing like, well, everything probably won't go back to normal, might have staggering schedule, you might have, um, you know, they might have to change up the office space. Have there been any discussion in terms of policy changing around employees coming back? Yeah, ab- absolutely. Again, that's one of those conversations that continues to evolve as more information becomes available. But S and P Global has made it very clear: uh, no one will ever be expected to to return to work in an unsafe um, environment. Um, no one will be expected to return to work if they don't feel comfortable returning to, to mm-hmm. work. Again, we're still there's so many unknowns 
out there. Uh, we we should, and, I, and I'm sure most companies are, you know, having these same conversations with their employees around their their own individual comfort level. I think this is something, you know, companies have to make a decision, but a lot of employees have to make that call um, on, on their own as well. So we continue to get updates on the the return to work kind of process, and and like you said office spaces being re revisited, um, even office location, maybe. Uh, there, there are many ways that, you know, we can re respond to this, but, you know, like others, we're still kind of playing it by air. Leadership is still playing it by air to figure out how that's going to, how that's going to look. Okay, great. Um, so before, you know, we continue, I know we got into, you know, what they're doing about COVID. Um, for mm -hmm. some people that probably don't know about SMP, as you said, you're, a part of a subsidiary. Um, I know they have SP Global Markets. Um, I think you're part of S&P Indices. If you just want to expand about what mm -hmm. your subsidiary do, so people can just yeah. have an understanding. Yeah, so S&P Global is the, the parent company. So I technically work for our parent company within the corporate division. The corporate division um, as well as S&P Global oversees all of the uh, subsidiaries, which includes S&P Dow Jones Indices, which I, which is the division I support, um, which is actually a joint venture between S&P Global and the CME Group. Um, S&P Market Intelligence, uh, as you, you mentioned, we have S&P Global Platts, which mm -hmm. focuses on the commodity markets headquartered in, in London with locations in, in the US as well. And S&P Radins, um, S&P Global Radins, which I think we, we, I think most people are familiar with, you know, they, they provide um, analysis of companies to, to evaluate their credit worthiness. Um, yeah. and, and, and one thing common that all of these businesses have it, the one thing in common that all of these businesses have is that we all provide data, information, you know, critical information that that people need to make decisions around investing, um, around the health of, of companies, around the health of the economy, right? Uh, so, so that's the kind of the common theme across S and P Global. You'll you'll see this the tagline: essential intelligence, power in the markets, you know, and 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 that's basically what what we do. Oh, okay, great, great. So at times people don't have a you know a quick understanding of what the breakdown is of the different companies and stuff. Um, so another thing I want to get into, you know, as you can see in the recent weeks, um, you know, things were around social injustice and you know what's happening, you know, in our communities across the the country and across the world. Um, and I just want to know um, from an S and P global standpoint, have there been um, support for the people of color in the organization? when it comes to these, um, you know, what we're seeing now? Yeah, um, yeah, the, the, the support has been unbelievable. This is such a unique time, you know, yeah. for, for everyone, right? Not just black people impacted by this, you know, black people have been impacted by racism for hundreds and hundreds of, of years. Um, this is a this is kind of a time of reckoning for for everybody and 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 S and P has um, I mean we've 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 had a series that that have been called um, courageous conversations right and mm -hmm. and that's what it's 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 been it's been a series of you know messages from our leadership every everyone from our CEO to all of the division leaders across the organization. Uh, you know, we've all, most of us have had an opportunity to even share our personal stories with the entire organization, which is unheard of, right? You know, it was just, wasn't that long ago where you wouldn't even like talk about that type of stuff at work, right? Um, I mean, we've had conversations about not only what's happening in the world and what we're seeing on TV, right? We're, we're having conversations about how did we get here? You know, um, why has nothing, why why haven't we not had the progress that we should have made? So you, we, we're talking about, you know, going back to, you know, Rodney King and then Martin Luther King and then even further back, slavery, you know, strong. it's like, you know, yeah. right? you know? so it's, um, we are definitely having very 
open and um, just really just very open conversations that I, I personally never thought we would have in, in, in corporate America. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what is S and P doing? Right. Because I am a big believer and, you know, don't just say it, don't just say something, do something uh, about it. Right. Definitely, and yeah. um, so, so S and P has already committed um, funds to social justice, Social social justice, you know, um, organizations, you know, focus on social justice for Black people, right? Um, because I think that's important. You know, we know racism happens everywhere. We know so many different groups of people are impacted. But right now, we know people are acknowledging that the Black experience is unique, and 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 S and P has acknowledged that as well. You know, but even right before this happened. We were also working as a, an ERG to work mm. with S and P to to actually we I uh, was in the process of getting funds donated to minority organizations focused on fighting the fighting COVID in the black community. So you yeah. know, so we we kind of been in this space, especially as an ERG within S and P. Um, so so S and P is definitely. And, and, and of course, there, there's work that needs to be done. So they're looking at things like um, the diversity program. You know, is it fit for purpose? That's, you know, do we need to do more in, in that space? Um, you know, we're continuing to hear from employees uh, training. Do we need more training in that space, you know, from a, a, a policy um, per perspective? So, a, again, this is... This is a very interesting time, and I would encourage everyone in your companies, now is the time to speak up, right? This this is just the opportunity we've never had. Whether whether you're black, white, or whatever, you know, speak up about your experiences, speak up about things that you observed, you know, speak up about how you're feeling, you know, because because that's kind of, that's where we are right now. Uh, and people no one will know unless you unless you speak up. So. Absolutely. Yeah. That, you know, that's something that everyone is a time to, you know, action as well as to learn um, from everyone. So we do encourage that as well in my organization. And that's good that S&P Global and a lot of other organizations is doing that because, you know, people that want to work at, you know, these um, companies, they want to see that things are being down, done, especially people of color. We want to make sure mm-hmm. that hey, the organization that we're working with or working for, you know, they support you know, ourselves, our, you know, social justices, our, you know, whatever things we're going through, I want to make sure that they're a part of it as well. Um, and I know you touched up on um, diversity and inclusion, which is a big thing. I know mm-hmm. that motto, I believe, for S&P is um, differences is more than something to ce- we celebrate, um, you know, I find, which I found very okay. interesting. <laughs> In terms of d and um, how do you say d and overall vision? How is it the strategy of d and tied to the whole overall vision of the, um, the company. The company. Yeah, so, you know, we, we all know there's, we, we no longer have to make the case that d impacts the bottom line, right? I think we're past that. And if the company is not past that, then they have a lot of catching up to do. And, um, and S&P has, has acknowledged that. And you guys, you guys have seen it, you know, up close and personal, you know, in the last couple of years, we, We've we've doubled down and tripled down. You know, we went this year. You know, um, on a national level in our support with the National Black NBA Association because we found that this organization is a prime source of of talent. You know, a black talent, and and we really want to be able to to tap into that. So that's something that has 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 been you know building up. Um, Gain and speed, you know, for for the last few years, inside of the organization today, we have you know our ERGs, um, employee resource groups. So we, I, th- I think we may be around ten or so. So pretty much anything that you can think of um, or affiliate yourself with, there's an ERG for that, right? Um, but ERGs are not, you know, the, our black ERG is not just for our black employee. You know, our our 
ERGs are, are open to anyone, but we, we want to make sure those ERGs have a mission focused on the, the target population that they're there to, to serve. Um, the company is very supportive of ERGs from a programming perspective, from a um, budgetary pers perspective, um, you know, which is always important, you know, uh, and and then we also have a DNI council. That DNI council is made up of people across the organization. This is outside of the diversity and inclusion department. Um, oh, okay. This is a council that actually meets on a periodic basis, um, and some are repre representing ERGs. Some, you know, maybe representing multiple. ERGs, but this council meets directly with the CEO to discuss diversity priorities, um, you know, amongst themselves and and with and with uh, leadership. So, you know, and and even from a, a global standpoint, we have to you know understand also that it's not you know racism, diversity, all this. It's not just a, a U.S. problem, right? It's a it's a global. Problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really important to find ways to make sure we engage our international community, especially because a lot of the core pieces of our business are centered in, in the U.S., uh, making sure everyone is engaged and everyone feels like they are a part of the, the company. Mm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so... It, you, you touched on the ERG. I was going to ask a question, but you kind of, I believe you kind of answered it around ERG in terms of, you mm -hmm. know, the impact they have. I want to make sure that because a lot of time, you know, companies have ERG and, you know, they'll have meetings and stuff. But once the, once they're able to have impact, you know, have a conversation, be in the room with the senior management, the C-suite, to you know, to drive their ideas around, um, mm -hmm. you know, focus, you know, that's always, you know, a great thing to have. Um, so, uh, so, you know, to get into the, another part of work for the company. So, um, how could you say, how is your, um, your overall, um, let's say, how's your overall, um, feel of the company in terms of working here? How's it been for you in terms of, you know, mm -hmm. from four years ago to now, how, 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 how has you grown, um, so far in the company? Yeah, so I, I support a division, you know, Dow Jones Indices that, um, you know, the only thing I knew about Dow Jones Indices, S&P Dow Jones Indices was the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you know, you see on, on the news. So that, that was the extent of my knowledge in that space. So I found that this organization was a good place to, to want to learn. Right to not just learn about the business that I support, but how that business impacts the, the world. Right, so through that during this time, it's you know I know it's not just the S and P five hundred, it's not just Dow Jones Industrial Average. There are hundreds and thousands of indices that are used across the world. Um, yeah. You know, for investment products and and everything else, or for or for benchmarks. Um, but I've also had a, an opportunity to learn about other businesses and that's and that's encouraged. It's encouraged to to not stay in your silo, but to to make sure to 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 try to kind of venture out and learn more about the company. And and I'm gonna go back to ERGs, you know, for a second on that because that's where a lot of those type of um, organizations or, or programs, that's that's where they are also helpful because they expose you to other people and in the company. So, so I've, I've learned a lot. Um, s and has a very flexible culture, uh, which is another reason why I think we were able to respond very quickly to the COVID-19 crisis because we, you know, there was already a culture in place of knowing how to work in different types of environments. So, you know, working remotely was something that was was encouraged, you know. Um, so I, I that's that's probably the biggest plus for me, you know, kind of like that flexible working environment, understanding that people work differently. And at the end of the day, you know, as long as you engage properly with your your colleagues 
and get your work <laughs> completed, you know, um, you know, in return, you you receive kind of that leeway to 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 have a more flexible environment. I I would also say, um, you know, I think you mentioned earlier when we talked earlier about mobility, and that's something in recent years that that has been encouraged more and more. Um, actually, our head of HR has has made a big push to encourage people to seek opportunities across the organization. One, because that helps you grow, you know, your skill set and, and expand, you know, your, you know, just your realm of, of, of thinking. But it also helps from a, a retention standpoint as yeah. as well. You know, if you you may if you're feeling a little fatigued, you know, in your in your role, check out some other opportunities with, within the organization. So what you're seeing now is, you know, different rotation programs popping up. So you may not be ready to kind of make that jump just yet, but, you know, now you have a potential of joining a, getting a rotation program where you can test out another function and see if it's something you'll be interested in or see if something, if that's something that your skill set actually Fits fits within. Um, also, wanted to touch on something that I found was unique. That's in the I'm sure other companies do this do this as well, but not to the extent of SP. We also have career coaches, and you and you tend to see career coaches in organizations that are focused on um, only senior leadership, right? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but these career coaches are actually accessible to any employee who reaches out and. And, and, and want to just kind of have a second set of ears, you know, to kind of discuss what they're thinking, how they're feeling in their current role, you know, where their skill set could, could probably fit fit best. And I think that's a that's a huge, a huge benefit to be able to do that within your own organization without feeling like, oh, if I tell them, I'm, you know, then something, you know, something may, may happen. So I, and, and, and I think lastly, I, I would say our benefits program, I think mm-hmm. um, SMB has excellent benefits and, and that's, that's key too. you know, compensation is, is one thing, you know, so there, there are certain benefits that are priceless um, or so expensive that yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> without them, you comp- compensation really means nothing. And SMB, and then I mentioned like time off policy and things like that, sabbatical opportunities. Um, you know, those are just a few of, of some of the, the the benefits that 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 makes it really hard to to seek out other <laughs> opportunities. So other opportunities. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, just on mobility, because um, that's one thing that when you know we do surveys, a lot of people, you know, at least seventy percent of the people always say that they're always looking for mobility within the organization. Um, so that's mm-hmm. a very, you know, that's a big plus for when companies could provide it. And then also have an internal coaches, which is great, you know, great opportunity. You know, uh, I've never really heard of organizations that really had that. So that's a very good thing to have. So in terms of, um, in terms of like the interview process, you know, someone wants to come in and work at s and um, what are some of the competitive advantages that someone will have during the mm. interview process? Yeah, I think S and P Global is unique in the sense that you you know there aren't a lot of companies like S and P, right? So it's you, very rarely where you will you find someone who actually has the the same experience that they would actually be doing in a job at an S and P from from a kind of fun functional um, in, um, subject matter standpoint. So I, I think it's really key to, to not only understand what s and does, but understand how some of your, your, your technical and soft skills that are transferable will help you in, in certain roles, right? So like I said, when I came to s and um, I didn't work in the, the finance space or say, right? But you know, I had strong compliance skills, strong risk, a strong risk background. Um, I, I think flexibility is is um, is important. The ability to show that you're flexible, right? So we want the we want our companies 
the companies that we work for to be flexible, but we we have to be flexible too and, and able to to kind of change as the company's needs change. And I think flexibility is really important. I think um, the ability to to show that you're able to to learn quickly, um, to 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 work in uncharted territory. So if you have examples where you took on a a stretch assignment because you you know maybe someone else went out on on a leave and there was no one else to 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 do the work and, and you picked up the work or you fell into a role and you know you were able to 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 learn the subject matter you know quickly quickly and, and get up to speed. I think examples like that are key. Technical skills are absolutely key. I, I think no one should ever um, underestimate their technical skills. So for instance, let's say you have experience you know, working with a certain, and I'm not a technical person, so for, forgive me, but, you know, a certain type of system that you that you know may not be used in another company, but you know that system does X, Y, and Z, which is probably similar to the type of systems that may be used at, at an organization, you know, that you're looking to work for. If you understand how knowledge of that system can transfer over to knowledge of maybe any system, you know, it's important to, to to show that to to the person that you're interviewing because when you when you interview you you tend to meet with different types of people. You can meet with a recruiter, you know, who has a certain you know expertise, you know, around the, the company and the role and what the manager is looking for. You may look meet with the hiring manager who knows exactly what he wants that person to know how to do and mm-hmm. how. You know, you know, from a and from a personality fit and from a flexibility per perspective. Um, so I I think it's important to just kind of be prepared for any audience that you that you get. But I I strongly believe in stressing transferable skills and um, and highlighting um, your ability to to be to be flexible and to learn um, and to work well with others. I know that sounds like really you know, um, repetitive, right? But it's it. those things are, are really key because a lot of these things, you know, a lot of, there aren't a lot of jobs that are really hard, you know, that, that are difficult to do. There are jobs that are hard to prove that you're a right fit for, though. And, and, and I think it's really key to, to try to understand what that fit looks like and, and, and look at your skill set and see where you can make that, make it fit in. Okay, great. Absolutely. Um, you know, because we're gearing up for our career fair, you know, just want to give pointers out to, um, you know, people that may want to interview with um, s and So that's always great, you know, to get your feedback from someone that works there. Um, mm-hmm. So from a, you know, a networking perspective, like, you know, how would you, especially during these times with, um, you know, everyone is still at home, there's no like happy hour right now or anything like that. How <laughs> would you go to, I guess, network with people now, you know, maybe they work at an organization um, and they want to find out information about the organization. How would you recommend people network now? I, I think you should pretty much do it this, the same way you've been doing it, you know, reach out. I, I had two virtual teas today, you know, um, and um, and one during lunchtime. You know? So it's so I, I think I think that's key. You know, I think a lot of people um, rose to, to the occasion with this new kind of way of, of working where where you see a lot of. Um, programming such as you know what you guys are are doing you know virtual sessions you know look look at who's speaking they may be talking about a topic that you want to learn more about people reach out to people all the time it's it's no different from work walking up to someone in a crowded room and you know giving your 30 second or 60 second elevator speech now and it's just kind of over email right so um I, i i think people should to just try to, and it's difficult, it's very difficult, but I think, you know, try to schedule those virtual meetups as as much as, as possible. But I, th- I think now more than ever though, it's really important to be prepared. Do your research, 
Um, it's 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 very it's very diff. It's easier to to end the conversation where you're standing face to face in a, in a room than to kind of hang up on a Zoom a Zoom call. So you yeah. know, just just make sure that those conversations work well for you and the person that that you're that you're meeting with. So I think research is key. And going back to the the career fair. Um, I do think it's important to do your re your research for you know regarding all of the companies that you're that you're looking looking to meet you know that you know 15 20 minutes that you spend even just per perusing their their sites can make a a world of difference when you have a conversation with with a recruiter or potentially even a, a hiring manager so I, I think preparation is is also key oh yeah, absolutely preparation is definitely key and I um, just want to talk more about um, uh, they are like using to attract more um, people of color. What other um, avenues are they taking right now to attract mm -hmm. more people of color? Yeah, so, so we're actually looking at um, increasing outreach to um, HBCUs, okay. which is which is key. Um, I am a Howard University grad, so um, that's near and dear to to my heart, um, and that's where that you know a lot of the talent is, right? Um, so uh, and and organizations like this, as as I mentioned, and um, also, you know what we've been what we've been doing. And this is before the this you know new the before COVID before all this. We actually started working more closely across ERGs to okay. kind of share ideas and, and share and share, you know, best practices in the recruiting space, which is I'm actually on a work stream across ERGs focused on recruiting techniques and, and how ERGs can help the organization more in that space. And I, and I guarantee you, you know, right. As we speak, Every company now is trying to figure out how to up their game, you know, in, in that space. But those are just a, a couple of examples of what we're doing in addition to what, you know, has, has been done in, in the past. But things like, you know, just to be practical, things internally, you know, things like bias training and, and all of that uh -huh. stuff. Those are key things that organizations should be doing too, because the, we know the talent is out there. There's no issue with the pipeline, right? You know, it's, it's all about the exposure and, and, and people of color just being given the opportunity, not being given a job, but even being given an opportunity to present themselves for, for an opportunity. So, there, there are many ways, and I think you guys are in a in a good position right now to push that effort as well. And uh, you know, just working more closely with your corporate partners, helping us with ideas, you know, around how to continue to engage, um, and whether it's through programming or re recruiting opportunities, you know, so we can kind of all improve in this in this space. Okay. Great. So, um, just a, a, a final, um, final question around, um, you know, a lot of people when they look at organization that they want to work with, they want to make sure that they fit, you know, what they're doing in, you know, community work. Um, I know you touched on a little bit in terms of um, helping out with uh, providing uh, resources for COVID um, people with COVID um, that was affected by the um, the pandemic as well as for social justice and everything. So from a, you know, what else are you guys doing in the community as there, you know, especially another side, even though it's about employment, I also want to bring up, um, what are you guys also doing in terms of supply diversity? Because a lot of companies, they use a lot of vendors for different mm -hmm. uh, organizations. And they might have people that not only probably looking for jobs, but also looking for supply diversity. You know, so how how is S and P involved in that from that perspective? Yeah, so from a community um, outreach perspective, we we have a corporate responsibility team that is um, very heavily focused on meeting the needs of 
the, basically the community in, in which we we sit. So you, if you take a look at our website, you you'll see um, you know this this huge this, this huge change pay um, change pays campaign that was focused on um, pay equality for 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 women. S and P donated. Um, I want to say a few million dollars to to that effort, but continues to 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 do things in in that space to help you know narrow that gap. Um, you know we we are very active even in in the disability space as as well. We support a number of organizations. You know, focused on one. Um, um, awareness in, in that space, but also focused on um, providing opportunities for, for people who, who suffer from disabilities, or I like to call different abilities, right? Um, and I'm also on the board of the Dis Disability ERG as well. Uh, we, we have a very generous uh, matching program. Um, mm -hmm. So that matching program for, for, for basically any nonprofit of our choice and, and even certain times of year, S and P will double the match. Right. So whether it's, you know, giving back to your, your alma mater or a, a community focus group that, that you care about. We, we also have a program where employees, um, um, can, can, um, organize volunteer programs using resources within the organization um, and other employees can sign up and you're able to kind of log your, your volunteer hours on the corporate responsibility site. Um, you know, s and and you know, s and is really huge in, in the ESG space, right? So, so, um, so we, we recently actually acquired um, Sam, the, 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 the portion of Robico Sam that calculates ESG scores. Right. Oh. And and so that that was a huge um, addition to the S&P. But even before that, we had ESG products, you know, focused on on um, helping investors, you know, kind of invest solely on ESG type products, um, investment products or or choose to invest on ESG and organizations that had a strong ESG presence, but also on the S&P side making sure that our ESG scores are right. So there's been a lot of focus on the, the environmental space. Um, we're very focused on the S right now from a social standpoint, right? I think there's definitely work to be, be done there. And on a corporate governance space, um, we, we actually have um, two black board members. Um, um, and um, I think we may have three three female board members. So my supplier diversity side, um, I think that's one of the areas that's actually one of our one of our goals from an organization standpoint to to ensure um, we we are kind of meeting best practices, but also not only regulatory obligations, right? Because there are regulatory obligations in the supply diversity space. But I do think um, you know, there's there's definitely a, a focus on that, but there's also work that we could additional work that we could be doing in that space as as well. And that's one of the things that that is a key item of focus um, right now because that's a clear way to tie, you know, diversity and inclusion to the bottom line, right? Yeah. You know, um, given it's not you know again you're not giving someone an opportunity. You're you're including them in in the pool of, of candidates that that should be considered for a potential opportunity. And again, it's not just for jobs, but that that's that also applies to our vendors as as well. As well. So before we close, I just want to give you the last word. Any thoughts about a career fair about S and P Global you would like to share? Yep, definitely. So S and P Global is excited one to partner with the National Black NBA Association and particularly the the New York chapter. As you guys mentioned, you know we've been growing this relationship over the years, and, and we look forward to continuing to to grow that relationship. I look forward to to meeting as many people tomorrow at the the career fair. Um, we have a great lineup from S and P. We have representation from across our different business lines. Um, that will be who will be attending the the fair. So so please you know be ready 
um, ask questions, um, and feel free to reach out to any of us after the after the fair. Um, you can reach out to us on LinkedIn um, or you know through through the New York chapter. So again, we we look forward to meeting you all, and, and good luck to everyone. Thank you. Thank you for the insight and everything that you shared. Um, we look forward to having S and P Global tomorrow um, at the career fair. And, you know, so I hope this was helpful for everyone that tuned in and to learn a little bit more about the organization, s and Global. And I just want to thank you. Uh, now I want to turn back over to um, Norvell um, to close us out. Thank you very much, Kavern. I um, want to thank um, Cheryl and, of course, you, Kavern. We have our president here, uh, Andrew Hamilton, who's going to give some final remarks. Uh, Andrew, there's a lot that, that was discussed there. Um, now in transition, but it's probably diversity. We talked about careers. Uh, what were some of your thoughts, some of your highlights from this conversation? It, uh, it you know, um, it's interesting because, you know, we first started this journey nine weeks ago, of, you know, digital series. Uh, we didn't see it at first, but we were creating a series of steps. And especially Entrepreneurial Mondays, when you have a lot of experts and thought leaders coming about NWBEs, you heard opportunity here. So it ties in and resonates with everyone that the opportunities that are that are existing on one level will reflect on another level from an entrepreneurial side. So, you know, one of the things that, um, which is fabulous about this conversation is the human touch involved and in, in, in how the pride of having diversity within the C-suite begins of diversity of thought and everything else. So. Um, again, uh, thanks again to uh, uh, Cheryl Baxter, s and Global. Uh, looking forward to a very uh, wonderful career fair tomorrow. And um, get ready, it's a great organization. You should lots to, lot to learn, a uh, lot to learn. And um, we're here, it's Metro New York Black MBA chapter and, um, and we you will win. And we're here for you to support you win as well. So thank you, have a wonderful evening.